Hey folks, so I'm going to be wrapping up uh, my hard surface kind of intro demo thing here. My goal is to finish this piece up, show you how you can take it, maybe even do some render stuff with it today because a uh, project's not done until you render it. So I'll be doing maybe a little blender work or maybe trying to do a little painting inside of Quixel Mixer. I'm going to give that a shot because it's a new tool that I think is pretty neat. But uh, we'll jump right in. And as always, ask in the chat any questions that you might have or check out things that you want to know more about. But I'll uh, see everybody's stuff and do a little review today that should be uploaded by now if you want to check out my comments on your projects. And uh, I have here this piece that I've been working on for a couple days, just doing little things here and there. Most of it, almost all of it is done in Zmodeler with lots and lots of live booleans. You see if I turn live boolean off, this is the model with all of its boolean pieces. With it on, we get this kind of result. Um, and in fact, if we dig through and we look at, at N here, you can see all of the tools that I have. It's a, it's a pretty big stack. So it's like nine by five. So it's almost like what, 45 um, pieces here. So it's like 43 different sub tools and I'm still not done making sub tools. So I'll still have a couple more to go. But by putting all these pieces together, um, especially I find these folders are really where it's, where it's at in terms of organizing stuff. So I'm missing a couple things. There's a little piece in here and I have to figure out where that went in the, uh, the mix of stuff because I've got a subtractive one here. I want to figure out where that piece is because I, I have two versions that are cutting, one for the top part and one for the bottom part. And uh, if I look through this, I got this guy, this guy, this guy's probably the one right here. Uh, it's because I got the one that's doing the cutting is above this one. So if I move this under it, order is really important. So I just had to shift those around in order and came back. Great. So I'm just kind of finishing up with the little holes and little pock marks and things like that. As you've seen me likely do before, my kind of favorite technique for giving me these pieces is I, uh, I like to take everything out of I want it relatively low in this chart so it's not getting affected by the cutting tool that's defining the shape. These guys, what are these doing? Oh, they're for the button here. It looks like they're not really hitting anymore. Because this is said button. This I have to turn off start. And now these, there we go. I should be able to give the little grooves on the button. I'm back into this and I start by control clicking to mask everything. I position right about where I want it to be and I'm going to turn off um, the X symmetry for now because I'm going to build it just on one side, put it on the other. Do polycube and I reduce all this stuff down to nothing. And let's go to split unmask. Hit D, because I'll be working with this in a little bit. Just figure out its position. Get it to cut in a little bit. And then set it to negative. And if I do Shift F, it turns it off. And I can make some adjustments and just see positionally where it is. I'm always looking for keys. It kind of like lines up with the bottom of this. That looks pretty good. Something like that. Because I still have some steps left to like kind of polish and shape everything up, and you'll you'll see that. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Coughing up a storm over here. So when I have that done, I want it on the other side, and I just take that cutting tool. I go to modify topology and mirror and weld cuts from both sides. And let's do a little example of those little circles, kind of dot cutting guys in here. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to take my same tool, Alt W, Alt click on a surface right about where I want to put 
control click to mask everything. Make sure it's nice and on the surface like so. I'm gonna add a skull into 3D. All the divisions are pretty good. I like to go eight spans and nothing in between. Flip it this way. And then I can scale it. Relatively size wise, how like how I want it. Scale it to about the length I'm looking for. And let's split it. And then I group by normals so that I can move it, but Let's take a look at solo on here. Oh, I got a crease poly group. So I'm going to group by normals. I'm going to uncrease all, set this a little higher because I want that whole thing, crease poly group. And uh, good. And then once again, like all these other pieces, set this to subtract. Shift F to turn this off. Just to, I just want a little surface, just like a little dot in this, like so. And then I can just control and drag these over to a couple spots. It looks like I got one down here, but its shape is a little different. So I'm going to go something like this. And then to get that shape, I mask the half top. So everything else needs to be masked. I'm going to mask this, control click, and then I can drag up like so, Z modeler, and I like to insert a couple edge loops, so, uncrease, crease, probably group. So that kind of puts them all on the same subtool. If I want to change how it looks, solo, and then I'm just moving it. In this case, I'm going to scale it to like flatten out that bottom a little bit more. It looks like it kind of lines up there, and this comes in here. So I'm going to use this time to adjust this position. So But I'm coming, you know, I'm looking pretty good on it. I'm feeling pretty happy with where things are looking. Sometimes some of my cutters get like, turned off. So this is on trigger. Like this gets got moved out of the group by accident, which I'm not sure exactly why it happens, but it happens. And the order of these is very important. So I want to basically cut out of this. So let's save it. And I have maybe one more piece. I want to get this little groove, this little um, kind of separate part out. And I've got a little, I don't know how to describe it, like a little nub thing here. So I'm going to center this, drag it down. I want it not symmetrical. I want it right on here. Mask it, and uh, I'm going to enable customize. This is split on mask points. I'm going to change it to split mask point, which enable customize, preferences, and store config. So I can get that back when I'm done with it. So now what I can do is, I feel like I'm doing, toss in a polycube, uh, make sure everything's looking okay. I am going to do middle because if I'm making it symmetrical I always want one in the middle and then I can just click mask and now I'm selected on this object this is part of the I would say like the magazine release would be my guess and give it a little little shape to it just makes it more interesting to look at What else? What else? What else? I made a couple things in the back just to give it some interest back there. Um, I think I've got most of the shapes in here. I'm trying to think about what I don't have. Oh, okay, so 
the things I I still need. Almost all these magazines are going to have some kind of hole in the bottom of it. I'm going to put one down here. And if I alt click, we can see it's going to line up for us, which is really convenient. So when I do cylinder, I can take my move tool, hit mask, and this is still going to be snapped like this. Then I group normal, increase poly groups. And then set this under mag. Under this guy, that's attractive. And it just gives me a nice little hole down here to work with. Yeah, just little details um, really help the thing when you're looking at it from different views. I save pretty frequently, as you notice. Uh, a couple things I notice, like this line doesn't seem like exactly lined up there. That's one of the reasons it's so nice to have everything in live booleans right now, because it does make it pretty easy for me to just adjust, and then I can just move it down. And now it's in a different spot, and it's closer to what I want. And it would all be really hard to make some of these adjustments without some of these tools. Like I can flatten some stuff out there. Just change up some, like I want these to be a little flatter on the ends. So now that's there. And I can just flatten things out and get it right about where I want it. Cool. Let's take this, get this nice and smoothed out. Feeling pretty good. I think the one thing I still want to do with this. <laughs> How do I like these? I think they need to be a little longer. Something like that. Oh, I gotta do that little groove cut, and I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna take this, this object here. This is all part of the slide, so I'm gonna hide all this. This is gonna get, again, a little, a little trickier stuff because I need to cut out and replace it. So I'm gonna start by giving this crease a little change. So I'm gonna take its crease level down to, say, B. And this kind of lets me play with the sharpness of the smoothing. Do like a five, do like a four, a five. And then to kind of give it what exactly I want, I'm gonna Z modeler and I'm gonna insert a couple of edge loops. Let's shift D, insert edge loops till I have it relatively quads, quads. And then as everything's a poly group, increase all, increase poly group. And that will just help me. The more you keep it in quads, the more even everything's gonna look when you smooth this this kind of stuff. Let's set the crease level up a little bit more to four. I just want a little bit of edge on this. And now I can take right after this because it's the top object. This object, let's do this and I'm going to cut all the way out of it and then put something back into it. So I'm going to use the same shape for two purposes. So I'm going to have to make some duplicates, but it's going to be fine. So let's go ahead and add a poly cube. Let's do split mask. And I'm going to scale this guy up. Shift D because it's not anything I need to do. Group by normal. Increase poly group. D. I'm just going to scale down, scale it back, because I'm looking to create a cutout shape. That's happening really lined up with this guy and all the way back. So something kind of like this. And I kind of want the idea that 
this line here is going to really kind of line up with that angle. Something like that. This runs all the way through, so I can take this, which should be under this slide, and I can do a subtract, which is going to cut all of this away. But it's okay, because what we're going to do is duplicate both of these. So I duplicate that, I'm going to stick here. I'm going to duplicate that cutting piece, put it down here. And this piece, instead of being subtract, will now be a multiply. So it's going to go through just that. So if I did everything right, I sure hope I did. Mm -hmm. What if I do this as a new start? Well, that's good, but it removes everything else. So I think I want to keep this relatively at the bottom of this whole group. So I'm going to move you all the way down to here. I'm going to move you all the way down to here. But this is a new start. There you go. So it doesn't look like a lot now, but it's going to make two separate pieces and it's going to help us get a seam in there. One last thing is I have this, which is kind of the outer shape, but I don't have the inner shape yet. And I want this to be one-sided because that's going to be important for later. Um, so I'm going to take all of this here. I'm going to use not my clip curve, but my select rectangle. And I'm just going to select and hide the back side of this. And then I'm going to go to the modify topology, delete hidden. So that no longer has a back side. That's exactly what I'm hoping for. And now I'm going to take this solo it and um, I'm going to make some modifications so I have that inside piece. So this is kind of terminating this way, which is ultimately what I don't want. So let's go to Z Modeler. I'm going to do a little modification. I'm going to set, just to make our modeling easier, display properties double. This is going to double everything up. So even if I delete stuff, I can see the back side. So I'm going to delete one poly loop. And based on the arrow, like if I went this way, it's going to go around there. If I point that little widget that way, it goes around here. Precisely what I want. I can do a close convex hole, and I'm going to go probably flat, and that's going to let me do that. Here, I have something a little different that I'm going to do, which is pretty cool, because I want this inside ring here. And this is going to let me kind of adjust it. So up and down is how many divisions. Left and right is going to let me make it in or out. It's only really letting me make it in. So I guess what I'll do is take it like here. Let's do this again. I want to, I want to get a center to this hole. Do something. This will be good for what I want to do. And this will let me now take all of this Z modeler. I'm going to set to QMesh, Polygroup Island, so I can push it. Let's do this again. QMesh, Polygroup Island. Interesting. I wonder what's going on with it. Like it feels like do I did I accidentally make more stuff on here? Let's do Polygroup Island again. And one of the things. I want to try here before I go further is just do a quick weld points just in case I'm going to use alts to draw this out that's okay that's much more predictable that's more what I was looking for that lets me drag it down and now I'm going to do a mask of just these points in here control click control click and that should let me just drag that um, let's try this again Instead of mask pen, let's do mask circle. So that's going to let me put a circle mask in the center, which is going to give me a mask here. It's still giving me that one, so I'm just going to take this and mask off that point. So I'm not moving that. Okay. Now I can drop this down. I can kind of scale that in. 
because I'm looking for that kind of like flashlight effect. And uh, to give me the final stake of my emitter, let's take Q mesh and let's go down with it. Let's take Q mesh and I'm going to go up to do something like this. This is going to be like the basis of my whole thing here. Press pen. So I can take all this with mask, solo it out. I have just this piece now. And let's do insert edge loops. And insert a couple edge loops here. Or, oh yeah, well, let's do it this way. I'm going to take this. Yeah, well, let's hide all this. That'll work fine. And then I'm going to delete hidden. Do that close hole. And now, if I take it, I can use that little trick to make my emitter. Increase poly groups. D. Let's make this all one poly group. Actually, I'll just hit W and then I'll just get this one. These polygroups, D, and that's going to create a nice little emitter for me. Let's get this. Let's increase polygroups. D, and that's going to be great. I'll take you and I'll hide you really quick. I'm going to need to make a thing that cuts this out as well. Well, that's what you get. Let's do that real quick here. Line that up right about here. Mask it off. Let's add a new cylinder 3D. I'm just going to up this instead of, I said this was 16. A little closer to a final thing that I want. Split mask and group by normals, crease polygroups, D, pop it in. Where are we at? Let's put you below this block. Subtract you. Okay, that should be good. I want to make sure it's clipping things out, which it is. That lets me get this in. Maybe scale down just a little bit. And then let's make sure that this dome guy goes under here. Perfect. I mean, not perfect. Good enough. I say perfect a lot. I mean good enough. Okay. I think I got everything. Now the fun part begins where I figure out how to turn this into a whole final project. I got a lot of little things and I'm probably just gonna do a lot of these as stamps um, on here. So some of these little circles and dots and things that I could have stamped a lot of this too, but I like doing as much as possible in here. Ooh, this cutting tool, sometimes this kind of thing happens where it like drops out of the order that I want everything in, which is more than a little annoying, but I want it, um, You said start here. Let's move this probably to the barrel, right? Oh, I really screwed up my order on some of these. And the laser thing isn't in here anymore. Let's put you in here. Like I said, it's like you gotta be real careful about the order a lot of these things in, are in. So this whole slide is the most complicated part of what I'm working with. And I probably should have separated the barrel from the slide and make it a lot easier for me to manage. So I might do that right now. Because I probably want it to be a separate piece of geo anyway. So select like this, make sure I got the right object. This one, I wish the highlight was a little stronger on this. I guess I can change some of the color settings for that. 
I'm pulling it out. It's now, I want to put it in its own group. I wonder if I can just do that by going folder from here, or if it's going to make a folder in a folder. Let's try it. Barrel. Okay, I got this. And then put this in here. Okay, that's good. Because now I can take this, and that means I can focus on this cutting tool and say it needs to be a lot deeper into the model. Same with the barrel, it needs to be a lot deeper. Let's turn off live Boolean, and then I can see this compared to this. Okay, good. The danger of live boolean so you got to be careful what you're playing around with so now i'm in this position of what connects to what i want to keep things broken up and i'm going to experiment with a little bit of how i turn this from a project of course if you were doing a project and you just want a cool hard surface model this would work pretty well um but we want to take all of this live boolean stuff and take it somewhere else so that means we're going to save a new version and i'm going to call this okay gun dash two underscore Boolean. I'm going to be taking this to Dynamesh, so I'm going to be booleaning things out. So let's see what we could do. Now, down in the Boolean thing, I could have make Boolean mesh, and it's going to take. Well, let's see what it does. I believe it's going to take this. And what does it give me exactly? It gives me a Boolean mesh. It gives me a lot of the separate pieces that I'm looking for. Pretty convenient overall. Kind of breaks into separate pieces for me, which is that's pretty convenient. Go back to the, the one I was working with here. I wonder if I can do allow dynamic subdiv. Now let's see what happens. This would be a different mesh because I have things looking generally like I want it. Because I, I use dynamic subdiv a lot on this. Which one is it? Is it this one now? Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Perfect. I mean, again, not perfect. Good enough. So this is going to give me this, and now it's all separate pieces, which means I'm ready to start doing some of the um, polishing with. So let's start with the slide here, which again is this whole shape by itself. Looks like they did a pretty good job of splitting up my pieces for me. So I'm going to solo this, so I look at it by itself. And what we see it gives me is this kind of geometry, which is a little weird, and it's not bad, though. So what I'm going to do, though, is it has most of what I want surface-wise. Um, maybe not some of this, though. Uh, I'm going to have to, before I do that, polymesh, i got to go through and make sure all my, everything's set to dynamic on. Because otherwise, it ain't going to do what I want. So I want to make sure, like my screw heads, for instance, definitely need to be on dynamic. These guys, uh, I need to go 
up a little bit in my smoothing level. Make sure there's plenty of sides for it. Same with you. Anytime I see anything that looks, I don't know, a little grainy, so to speak, I want to up it. Okay, maybe this back piece and up that, moving to something like four, just based on its size. Make sure my barrel is high enough resolution. What do you set? Two, three, five. How about you? Level, let's do three on you. Okay. These guys look a little far in. Open it just a little bit. Okay, let's save this again as Boolean. Okay, yes. All seems pretty good. Let's do that again. Make Boolean dynamic subdivision, turn it on. should be the most recent one. Okay, yeah, that's looking a lot better. All that stuff looks pretty solid. So it's gonna give me this and maybe that's fine. You know, you have some creases, you have some edges, but I'm gonna show you how we can take it like really to the next level and do some really cool stuff with it using the polish tools and a lot of our, our old pal um, Dynamesh. So I'm gonna Dynamesh in a way that you haven't done before. And now that I have a version of this that I like, Gun to Boolean, I'm going to save it as this, and then I'm going to make another one that's my Dynamesh version immediately after this. So I'm going to say save, and this time, so I'm keeping that as it is. Like I said, I'm looking at major stages, and I'm trying to save it. So if I have to go back or I have to pull one of these tools because I screwed something up, I can always pull one of these back out. So now I've got this whole shape. It's got some good stuff. It's got some messy stuff, but that's okay because that's what I'm expecting. Let's go to my Dynamesh, and I'm doing one tool at a time, and I'm keeping it in solo because this is pretty intense. And I'm going to turn on Dynamesh, but I'm not going to go 128 because 128 is going to obliterate a lot of my details. Also, dang it, I got this wrong on the side, but that's okay. It's symmetrical, so I can always do a mirror and weld. Uh, I'm going to have to flip it first. If you ever get that where mirror and weld goes the wrong way, you're going to have to go mirror first and then do a mirror and weld. Uh, one second, I'll be right back. Okay, just had to get an error message just popped up. So now I got it symmetrical, I got all the stuff I need. Uh, now I'm going to go into Dynamesh, and like I said, I don't want to Dynamesh at 128 because it obliterates all my stuff. Instead, I'm gonna go pretty high. Actually, 1232 is probably pretty good because I want it really, really high resolution because I wanna get all the little sizes of everything. This is now a pretty dense mesh, as you can see. So if we take our geometry, anytime we hover over something, we can look at it and it's, it's a lot. So it's 1.7 million points. This is the highest I generally go in this because any higher and it really screws stuff up. But what's cool about this now that I have this is I, you know, I have some pretty sharp edges. But if I do things like um, polish by features here, and I'm actually gonna create all, I want it all in the same poly group. I do a little polish by features, you'll see that it can give me like softened edges like so. And we can just kind of play with these. So like polish by features with this crease off gives me a different effect. It gets a little closer and it, it, it sharpens it up a little bit. A general polish will polish the whole surface of something. The larger the number goes, the more it goes on the whole thing. This is actually a pretty common technique for this kind of modeling. Auto saving. It's gonna take a long time on my auto save. This might be a good time to turn off auto save is because by now the autosaves are gonna take a little longer. 
So there's a couple, you know, different techniques I've seen people use, polished crisp edges, things like that. Um, one of the cool techniques I use sometimes, if you really want to chamfer edges, is you can actually go down into your masking and you can do mask by features and you can look at like borders or creases. This is a, a technique that you can do by like angle. I'm not gonna use that for this. That's um, a nice booleaning technique though. You can use another stuff. But if I do a little polish along here, it's just gonna soften things out and give me some nice, some nice creases all around. But it's still gonna preserve my overall shapes. So to compare, I started here and I ended here. So it's a little, it's just cleaner and it's got better edges on things. So I'm gonna go through one at a time with some of these shapes and just do that. Dynamesh it at a pretty high resolution. Relatively the same will be fine. So somewhere in 11 or 12. As soon as I'm done with that, just polish up the edges a little bit. And now we can see it gives us that little crease running through it. Let's go into this object. Um, these little guys, let's do W and I can do auto groups. So it's splitting objects up by themselves. So anything that shouldn't be together. And now I can do um, a split to similar parts. So it's gonna put those together. Unfortunately, these look like they, do they Boolean into that? Well, not the greatest in the world, but I think we'll, I think we'll live. I wanted to keep those screws separate if possible, but since these ones are with these guys, I'll just, I'll just merge them together anyway. Merge down. Okay. Control W will make this all one shape. And we can see here, I don't have nice edges, but it's pretty quick to just go a high dynamesh, like so. Let's probably didn't get enough density on these screws before I brought them over. I should have brought them up to a higher subdivision level, but well, like I said, as I keep saying, we'll do the best we can with what we got. So I'm going to go ahead. Don't need this, don't need this. Just need Dynamesh right now. And then I can take my polish. And just, it gives me those little edges that I'm looking for. But I think you kind of get the pillowing with the open circle. So I'm doing the closed circle, which gets more of a, a chamfer. Depending on the kind of material, you might want a different effect. Now I can take you, and you're like a little separate piece, the Dynamesh U. Again, pretty high. Don't really care about poly groups, just polishing things up until I get a nice shine on the edge. So this, because I definitely want to split some of these up. So let's auto group. Oof. It put those together and it clipped the whole thing in. Well, I definitely didn't want that. So I'll have to live with what I got for now. But I am going to go split up these two, the split mass points. And uh, I'm just going to get rid of that. I can go to sweet hidden. This is fine by itself because I can always just subdivide it. It's a high enough resolution as it is for the most part. So this, you look, you looking good. Let's make it all one group. We probably don't even need to do the dynameshing because it's loops and everything are actually pretty good. But if you want to, you can. I'm gonna just kind of take it as is and divide it a couple times and then I'll polish it. Take it down one level. So 
Let's take you. You're all one group. This is great. Same deal. Dynamesh at a relatively high resolution. I'm just going through my pieces one at a time. Dynameshing them and polishing. We can see this polish gives us that nice, that nice edge on everything. Take a look at you. Oh, I already got you guys. How about this barrel? I know I haven't gotten the barrel yet. Let's solo that. W and I mesh this up pretty high. And let's get the polish going in here. Cool. Just like I said, cool because it kind of softens things up. I have my auto groups, all of this. Probably just should have done more to keep like things like this button separate. But well, you win some, you lose some. I don't particularly feel like going back at the moment. And now I can get a little, a little polish on all the edges. Thank you. Same deal. Make sure I've got exactly what I'm expecting. Control W to make sure it's all the same thing. Dynamesh it. A high level. And then run a little polish. Almost done with all of these. Got one or two left to go. So this Dynamesh is just to give me enough resolution to polish things up. Because if my resolution is too small, my polish wouldn't work properly. Like this object right here, you can see it's this shape. And if I turn around and polish on this right away, it wasn't too bad. Still, I'm going to, I don't need my Boolean on either. That one was already pretty close to where I wanted it. This one I'm just going to, I think I'm going to divide a couple times because it's basically a cube already. Okay. So now I get to save this as my Dynamesh version. It's all polished up. And this would be like a high poly version. I could bake this, I could take it to another level. But something else I can do with this if I wanted some of these additional pieces is I could use some alphas to draw like little things like those little notches, <clears throat> which I do with something like my standard brush. I'm gonna change it to drag rect and I'm gonna look for a good alpha that's gonna do what I want. I don't really see an alpha. There's like an alpha generator now. I haven't really used that though. It's like a whole crazy alpha generator thing that I haven't really used, but guess I don't have any alpha packs open. I wonder if there's any in here. 
No, they just got some skin ones. I might do that detail, like a texturing or something like that. But I want to show you how I can take this now and also use the same tool to get like a low poly, which is a very similar process, but kind of in reverse. Because now I've got an object and it's, it's, it's pretty big. This has got a lot of points in it. Um, so if I look at my under document or is it under my preferences? I think I'm miscellaneous is like my active. So my total points, this is now a 7.2 million point object, which is a lot. Um, but I can actually go through and do like a decimate master, which would be a lot easier and make my file a lot smaller in the end. But I want to go back to not you. You're cool. Let's go back to the object I was working with. Not you, not you. Is it you? Nope. Is it you? Nope. Here we go. My original live Boolean version. And if I want to make now a low poly version of everything, I guess I can. I could take things like this button and make it a separate folder. Like it does a pretty good job of breaking it down if it's in its own folder. So I definitely am going to take this opportunity to do a little splitting up of my objects that I otherwise hadn't separated. Like you on laser. I'm going to say you go in your own thing. I'm going to say you little widget go in my own thing. I'm going to say these screws here, which are in the, the mount. Trying to figure out which tool these are. I wonder if I can make this a little easier. Preferences, uh, my colors. Is there a color or selected sub tool? Like the highlighting. It would be really convenient if it wasn't so dang subtle. Like it's hard to tell which of these. I'm gonna close slide, I'm gonna close barrel, and mount, which is why I was looking at the wrong place. Okay, so pull this out. I'm just trying to split up things that I know I wanna be separate. So I'm gonna take this object, which is on block, and that's my button. And I'm going to make you your own thing. Let's give you a folder. I'm going to put you in here with him. So that way those will be separate and won't be all together. I don't remember if there's any other trouble areas, but I think those were pretty good. Save this and I'm going to say, this is going to be low poly. So a pretty big file, but I got all these pieces. And now what I can do is take all of this. And this time I'm going to go to my geometry. And I mean, there's like a lot of ways I could do this, but I basically don't want any of that wacky creasing, like all those little crease tricks. And I can kind of turn down, like a lot of these objects I'm gonna turn off subdividing for. In this case, I'm going to take this and turn it down to like, I'm kind of setting how many edges I want just by looking at it. Some of these aren't going to need it. You, I'm just going to set you down. That one is probably good for you. These guys, I'm going to set you down to one. 
So there's a 16 sided. You, I'll set you down to one is good here. You can see I'm kind of changing these by changing their subdivision level. Same with this button. Set your level down to two. You're good at two. Something like you doesn't need to be. You definitely need to be, but. Maybe not that many levels. A bit tedious, I know, but it's a lot less tedious than doing it all kind of by hand. And let's see you. You can go down to one just fine. So what I'm just doing is I just kind of manually went in and I'm adjusting how much they subdivide. Kind of per piece so that none of my holes are too crazy in the subdivision. Kind of range. Yeah, that feels about right. Well, let's take that down to one because I'm looking for things that are going to be sharp creased. Anyhow, so I'm basically looking to create how much resolution I want on my low poly. When I have all this, same thing. I'm, I'm going to leave booleans on, subdivide make boolean mesh, but it's going to give me a version of this now that we can see is references misc a lot lower, like 7,000 points. It doesn't have all the detail though. And then I can take this further by saying I'm only going to get exactly what I need with this. This is actually not too bad in terms of angles, but this is a version I could start to work with. But if I take something like this, let's open up Z plugin. I could use on something like this, a decimation master, pre-process, and then decimate. And it's gonna try its best to simplify. Probably don't need to decimate that much. Or probably not at all. I just wanted to kind of get some planar reduction. But honestly, it's, at the, the resolution it's at, it could probably go out just fine. I'm gonna take all these tools that I've got and I'm gonna to try to merge them together. In fact, what if I just take all of these and I say, you know what, let's just combine all of it, one piece with the exception of this guy. Which somehow still combined with my little nub and I guess I didn't keep them in separate folders. But A 
just do something. So this could be something I could actually um, soften, I could smooth, I could clean up now inside of something like a, a Blender or a Maya and turn into a game object. And I'm using the same tool, so I haven't had to rebuild it multiple times, which is pretty convenient. But I think I just want a cool render out of what I'm doing. So let's go to that one we were working with previously, who is our super dense guy where everything's packed together. And I'm going to start kind of, I can start coloring or painting this, but I can also, yeah, painting this is probably a good move for right now. So I got a couple things I definitely can just start um, coloring stuff in here. Uh, a tool that I like to use sometimes with this is ANZ plugin is there's like a new color thing that they've got Z color and it's a little plugin which can be nice for like grabbing colors from these surfaces I think it should be this little light blue and set your material to shaded like so stick this off to the side and that's gonna let me pick color I'm gonna fill you and fill you and then a lot of you guys will go set color and I'm gonna fill all the objects that are this color Of course, this gets tricky because it's not white. Correct. Get you though. Fill object. I have like a couple of colors here, like this lighter metal. And that's going to be um, a couple of these objects. It's going to be on these screws, but it looks like I'm going to have to hand paint those. Almost forgot you. You, I'm going to make it a black color. You've got yellow. And some of the other stuff I'll have to do a little and painting like this area is going to be a little tricky because I should have probably kept the outside and inside of the slide separate for this. But as usual, work with what we got. So let's go to. I'm going to do a mask curve and mask curve is cool because it's great for like straight objects because if I double click. We can see I can create. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Let's try this again. Try to get, I'm gonna basically set it to all the stuff that I want. I'm gonna do it kind of like, I actually, uh, always I can do this. Just trying to think of the best way of freezing up my whole computer to get it to crash. <laughs> so I'm going to take all of this and instead I'm going to um, subtractively mask it. So I'll do, I'm going to want that too. Okay. I'll do that in a second. I'll do clip curve. I'm just trying to set this like so. Ooh, 
I'm always thinking of like fast race units. So I'm actually going to go select wrecked to just get the front. This is what I want. Now it's going to be a lot easier for me to clip out these edges. I want to make sure the lines are headed the right way. And I'm using space bar. We can see how it's kind of going for us. And now, take you. What do we say? It'll work. That's what we say. Now I can take my standard, turn on RGB, make sure this is set freehand, and I can just paint out. This interior stuff. Do mask perfect circle. Now I can fill that. That's okay. Put it back there a little bit. Let's just get this. And I'll do that clip curve. I should say mask curve. Hit this up by going right with this. Right click. Yeah, just adjust how it fits how I want it. Now, your color, a lot of text. Okay. In fact, for something like this, I can take my standard, I can do a drag rect, and I can change my stroke to something like alpha. And then I can just drag out what I want. Of course, probably better if I change my focal shift to something pretty big, because that's going to give me a sharp edge. And X. Okay, I want to make sure I only have this one side. Get this red color. And if I want, instead of doing it this way, I can do with that mask perfect circle because that's going to let me drag and move it. Probably a better way to go. Of course, it gives me both sides of this. Mask pen, remove that mask, invert the whole thing, and then fill out there.
anything else I'm probably going to do in texturing. I just want to get a quick render in here. Save it. Hmm, I should have been numbering all these. <clears throat> well, 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 let's talk about <clears throat> my high resolution version. Let's see what I can do about this should be the right. I just want to make sure I got the right version. Yeah, 7,000, 14 sub tools. Can I do them? This one big shebang thing. I want to try this out right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to take all these and I'm going to say merge visible, which is going to create yet another poly tool, but this is going to be this one here, which is like everything all is one thing. I'm going to do auto groups. which is going to kind of split all of these up into their own dealies. And a lot of these could be reduced by quite a bit. Hmm. Should have done some of that for this, but yeah. I want to see how much I can get away with in a ZBrush only kind of thing. Let's see UV master. <laughs> I don't know how well this is going to work, but um, it's not going to work well. This is like an all out auto unwrap and it's a mess. This is not going to be good. <laughs> like I probably could take all these booleaning them all, all the visible objects together run it through something like blender to unwrap it even though blender is not my favorite unwrapping tool but I'm looking more to say like, can I get functional UVs? UVs are necessary for baking. If you take in any of my other like modeling classes, you'll know that's how I can get a 7,000 point model to look like a 7.6 million point model. So that's the only way to, to really pull that off. Mm -mm -mm. Of course, if you just want something pretty right away, there's easy ways to do that in other programs. I look at flatten. Didn't I just create? Looks like it won't unwrap from this, which eh, is not surprising. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this object that I got right here. This is a good start. I got a lot of pieces and I'm going to send that to Blender and uh, see if I can get the rest of this in. And then I'm going to bring it into Quixel Mixer. Ah, criminy. Wrong blender. I don't use. I I have the Steam version of Blender. I got to get rid of it. It's it's annoying. I don't like it as much as the other iterations. So I'm gonna take this general. I want to turn on the Gozy listener. That little button. Where's my Gozy? And then let's go continue. 
that brings in this whole guy here. Which is all one object that's merged. And then I'm gonna be five loose parts so that I can get all these as their own individual things. Like I said, I lost a couple things, not a big deal. But what I wanna look at is can I take some of these, put this all the wireframe display, and reduce the polygon count till it's the absolute minimum I need. So let's go to decimate and I'm going to do planar. Ooh, that's lovely. Let's go ahead and I'm going to click a bunch of these. So if I take like all of these and then I do control C and then I can copy modifiers. Oh, blender. Oh my gosh, you guys have no idea how nice exactly what I'm talking about right here is, but I'm going to put, I'm going to basically say everything and you last and see, copy all modifiers. Let's see if I can crash Blender now. Usually you just have to give it a second. I mean, it depends on your computer. I know I'm running on kind of a beast, but that's because I also do streaming. So this is like really reduced stuff down to a minimum number. Some of these, not great, as you can see. Um, see if I can turn off. I'm looking at any of these that I think aren't good, but I'm gonna turn on instead something like unsubdivide, which works a lot better for this. This shape, Planer, and then I might be doing after this another one of these, another decimate, this one uh, as a collapse. And I'll probably do, I'll do some manual cleanup on this one. You, you're just, you got too much stuff going on. Especially with those little inner guys. Let's see if I can throw another decimate and this time put a collapse on it. Okay, that's not so bad. But yeah, these guys are the ones that are like, gonna have some weird stuff going on. We combine these together into one thing. You're definitely one of the ones that I probably can't do. Like I might do this, and then another decimate, this one would be a planer. Or, I have like pretty decent subdivisions through, so I wonder how Unsubdivide is not going to work for you. Honestly, though, I might not even need it for this one. I might just leave this one like this. Everything else, though, chopped up pretty nicely. Except this. A little bit. Uh oh. You can always tell when you move something and it doesn't happen. Okay, let's undo that. So whatever I had it set to before was, was doing just fine.
I'm going to take you, and I'm going to see if I can do a collapse, then a planer. Nah. Actually, that's great. Damn, works better than uh, I kind of expected. You, I can get an unsubdivide. I already kind of lowered it, so it's actually fine without it. Okay, so you might be wondering why I do all this. This is because it makes a lot of my unwrapping way easier. So um, this guy's decimate here. There's a little cleanup to do for sure on it, but and these are mostly mostly what I want. Some cleanup for sure though that I might have to apply a couple things, but I might be able to get away with a weld. By distance. Nope, that's not going to do it. Just I got those like weird extra hangy outy things, which I'm not a huge fan of. I don't need this listing around right now. I'm going to save this. Just the uh... and uh. A lot of pieces, but that's okay. I'm going to start taking them one by one here. Doing a little bit of cleanup. I guess I'll, I, I saved all these, so I guess I need to start taking these and applying the modifier. And then I'm going to focus on one at a time and uh, clean up some of this garbage. The dissolve vert. Trying to figure out kind of what some of these are. You can tell you kind of got some garbage geometry in here. That's okay. That's why we're cleaning everything up. And to get everything on the left and right side, let's do a little auto mirror. So anything I do to one side, it's going to happen on the other. M merge those up. This guy I don't need. Wonder if I can just get this edge. Edge. Kind of killing some of these verts and looking for these extra ones. This is just for people who want to like know how to take this to a game mesh, which you know some of the people in the class will probably want to know how to do. Considering you may be a member of our brand new created major in game design and development. Okay, when I got this like so, to we got one or two missing in here. A little check. Perfect. I mean, again, I say perfect, not perfect. 
good enough. Here to here, F. It seems like a lot of stuff I'm doing, but this is like, this is the real work here. This is cleaning up. This is making things look nice. Let's see if I can kill these bases and we'll get rid of that. Oh, that's probably a much easier way of doing what I was doing. Got a couple faces stacked on top of each other. Now I can look for those extra little verts and just dissolve those. There are some tools that I think can automate this, but I know how to do it this way. those together. Dang, I probably don't need this edge. You're cool though. And I'll merge the last. And I think I'll do the same with this one. Okay, so it's cleaning that up. We can see all these little spots. Let's see if I can do a little Clean. Um, if I can get any of the cleanup tools. So clean up. Nope, nothing loose. But that's good to do. Just looking through some of these. Looks like I have to do these by hand. Some of these though can I can merge in. Take all of you then. I'm just gonna do a lot of merging. Kind of like at least I know what's gonna happen. This is a little rat's nest over here. So I'm gonna delete this face. So that's that's my that's my problem. This stage of cleanup is like a lot of deleting. But it's a lot faster than remaking everything by hand. Get you to there. If you're just tuning in, you're hitting the soothing part of today's live stream. See if I can get you. Some edges don't want to be dissolved. This was definitely a shape that should be in here. It's not really in here anymore. I'm not entirely what happened. It's somewhere in my cleanup I got I killed something that I shouldn't have. Which does happen. Okay, I'm dragging the middle. And uh
I put away all this stuff. So I don't even need any of this. I'll never see any of it. You I got rid of. Not sure who in the heck you think you are. All right, I got a lot of internal booleaning shapes that this is the danger of all this boolean crap. One of the things that this whole project is not doesn't seem to be very happy with me on. Let's see if we can remedy some of that. Oh, thank you so many people. If you don't clean this kind of stuff up, man, UVing is super not fun. I thought for sure. I was like, oh, this works great. And then it totally didn't. I wonder if there's ways I could have cleaned it up more. And I got so many internal faces, which is decidedly not what you want. The merging seems to be working better than trying to split them up. They're very close to each other. That's probably 32 seems about right. At the size of that guy. Getting close.
That's never a good sign. Oh, that's the inside. That's why. What's going on there? Security faces. Doesn't want to get rid of it. It's right there. Move faces. Okay. Take you here. Merging to last seems a lot better. Just a little test to get this all up. F. Not too well here. It means it's twisting as it goes, which is not a good sign. That might work. Every once in a while, I hit A. M. Merge by distance, that it just point to one. Okay. Put these cuts. You to you. And then it's this big screwy inside track line. Figure out what's going on with you. Got a constellation in here. Oh wow, this is some. This is what we call some garbage geometry. That's for sure. All right, let's see if we can delete this face. Hit L. It selects everything that's connected. I can delete all the vertices. It takes get some this is why the automatic tools, man. You think like, oh. It's going to save me a ton of time doing everything automatically, and eh, not always. Sometimes the cleanup is worth more trouble than it's worth, you know? Faces. I'll do that cleanup, because now I should be able to get some. Planner. Mesh zero length is what I want to get rid of. That seems normal. What about the inside? Hey, you seem cool too. Now. Here, we can start filling out the rest of these. Okay, just getting the ones on top of the cells. I'm not sure what happened to this little cutout in here, but 
I think I'm just gonna, I, I know the shape it should be, because it should line up with both of these. So I'm just gonna take you, and I'm gonna take you, and I'm gonna do a split. Not slide. Nope, not that kind of split, uh, subdivide. And now I'm gonna take you, move you back to this axis, connect here. That would be where that went. <laughs> Mystery solved. Two okay. edges. Ooh, that was a long journey. Make sure I save this. So now that I got that, I should be able to unwrap just the half of this. Again, I'm only looking at this piece right now. And I'm gonna go select all, go to you, and I'm gonna do a Hmm. Could do smart UV. Let's see what happens. Not the worst thing in the world I've ever seen, but it is the worst thing in the world I've ever seen. Some of their edge tools or something they're going to be working on, which I'll be pretty happy for them to be doing. By get these kind of all out of the way. Do my UV sync. Pull you dudes out of the way because I'm going to combine all of you into one thing. You do and definitely don't need all of these internal lines along here. Something's breaking you. Aha, I missed one of you. 
Okay, last. Now let's see. If I go here, we'll look at all of them. Yes. Exactly what I was hoping for. Pitch. I kind of want all of this to be one run here. That is going to give me this shape. Let me take this dude, link, and then follow along the quad. No, follow along the quad. What's your deal? What's your story? You were all you are. Who the hell are you? Hmm. I still got some mysteries. Probably relating to some bad geometry I have left over. Well, that don't seem right. I bet I have an extra. In here, there it is. Boy, the things you get. With all of that, I want all of you together. Oh my goodness, is this part? Oh, never fill this in. Oh. You know what? You'll learn a new trick or two every single day. I'll go down all the way to here, unwrap that together. Great, that's exactly what I'm hoping for. And you, I think I'm just gonna make this easy on myself by reducing some of these sides. Or, hmm. Something like this, I know I'm going to want a ring like so, and I'm going to go unwrap all these. I'm going to take you and because I want this to be a relatively straight line, so I'm going to go. Take you two. Uh, let's set the snapping here first. That will do it. Take 
L all active bots, and that'll flatten things out nicely for me. I gotta do that for a lot of you guys. Need a steam in here. You good. What are you doing? Yeah, you're good. How about you? Yeah, you're good. As I kind of go through and I see that I've got some of the stuff the way I want it, I just pull it off by itself. These two I definitely want together. you together I'm gonna take A little bit of flatness in here. I don't think if I do, and I want it to be so nice. And I get it to go with the flow. Eh, not as bad. Close though. Two mark seam three jump around you don't wrap it. I want these nice straight lines. Let's take S Y zero. Just looking for that wonkiness. You, you're cool. How about you? You're cool. You guys are pretty cool. This is the shape I'm. Yeah, that's actually kind of fine. Actually, I'll do these. And I'll do project view. View. So this is now all these pieces. What you guys? What are you? You do. Let's go. Put 
all it used. Add video. And then I'll just unwrap that. This piece together should be going okay. About here. Y'all. Wink. All right. Quads. You where I want you. And then. Just looking for anything that looks out of place, not straight on. Get this straighter. I can get these pieces better. want things running as up and down as I can get them.
especially when you do hard circuit stuff. A lot of people find uh, this process pretty time consuming and annoying. I like it. By the way, if you're watching this, this is purely educational. You do not have to unwrap everything for the project. I'm just interested in playing around with stuff like this. Um, I don't know. Playing with a lot of stuff. And uh, it's been about two hours of streaming. So I'm gonna probably call it quits here. You can check out the stuff. This is just kind of me going through the process of unwrapping things. And as usual, I'm going a little overboard, but that's kind of what I like about 3D modeling. I like going to pushing things as far as I can get them visually. I haven't done as much unwrapping in Blender too. So I'm kind of getting the rhythm of it. There's a couple of tools that I've seen people really swear by that I have not used myself. It's supposed to be really good for all these processes. That's interesting. You have an extra vert. Almost missed you. Okay, let's save this. Now I can take all these. And I need to do a little packing. Okay, I'm gonna do, that's probably what I'm looking for. Average island scale. 
great. And then I can do it back. Oof, that's a lot. Let's see if the rest of the pieces are going to be that much of a pain in the ass. God, I hope not. You, uh... Definitely in here. Go ahead and apply that wireframe. I don't need what we call back faces. I'm just gonna keep streaming until I'm done. People are free to log off for never be keep it up in the background, but I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna use a slightly different technique now where I'm gonna pick out where I want my seams. So let's mark these. Let's mark you. Mark. Mark. Now, if I take all these and and wrap them, nice. one thing though, I don't need the resolve. That one was relatively painless. Don't need these either. Let's go. And it should move. Yeah. Oh. That's good. That piece is done. I think what I kind of do is I'll take these okay. and I'll just start hiding them as I finish them. Okay. You should be very simple. Yeah. Yeah. This won't mesh. There's almost nothing to it. I'm going to start with an unsubdivide. Why? No, me and you. And then just mark scheme. Good. Two. Mark scheme. A U. Unwrap. You're done. Let's do this barrel now. I feel like I have a lot of excess geometry happening in here. That's one of the things I like about this tool. Do that decimate, but now I'm going to use a little trick here. I'm just going to take you guys, groups. I'm going to assign it. Then we can come back into here. And that'll just chop up these pieces.
trying to make sure I don't get rid of any on the outside. That's right, that's where I start getting rid of things on the outside. Don't want that. Oh, crash, crash, crash. I don't see anything up with you. I don't know what you are. Oh, you're just triangle. I think I just made a triangle with that command. I can do a select internal. Hmm. Still not what I want. All right. It's dumb, but I'll do it by hand.
that was harder than it needed to be. But we got it. This side of things definitely don't need most of these. Go to our view. I'm going to draw all these faces. Draw all these faces. I'm going to leave you like that. Spots every now and again in here. Camera making this a little hard. Let's start. Let me set it at point zero zero one. Get in a little bit closer. That interesting. I mean, I hate it. There's a real mess in there. Are you a mess too? No, a little bit. What am I gonna do with everything over here though? Man, some of this Boolean junk really turned into a mess. These long, thin search cards are the bane of my modeling existence. You guys are seeing exactly why I like working in ZBrush so much because the stuff that you have to do like this is a pain in the ass. And what was in here just made everything decide to go nuts.
All right, well, hopefully I can unwrap this without too much trouble. Do another merge by distance. You and you, Mark Steen. You, Mark Steen. Let's unwrap it. Ooh, that was what I was afraid of. You're good, so are you and you not the same thing? You're good, you're good. What in the heck are you? Figure this will ah, I didn't run a seam along this. That would do it. All right, this would be a little annoying, but fortunately, some of the tools gotten a little bit better just control click my way in even if it's triangulated I know oh, that's where I'm trying to go with this Got to create a seam for any time you got a cylinder. All right. Now let's mark this seam. Let's A, U, unwrap. Okay. Definitely close. But I didn't make a seam here. All right. Well. Yes, done did it. Let's done finish this. Link. Oh, it did not like that. Too much triangulation, I think. Well, we're going to call that the guy, because I ain't dealing with the rest of that. Hey, I view, I view. This one shouldn't be too bad. Try this, and then it's just uh, mark some seams. Afterward, mark seam. I'll clear these seams. Efficiency, people. 
definitely have some cleanup to do in this. Control tab will give me a full screen on anything. Do a little merging here and there. Okay, that one was pretty painless. This guy, yeah, it's not too bad because I'll just take everything out from the inside. In fact, since everything's mirrored anyway, just edit it all the mirror. So I only have half this to work with. B. Box select. Space is. I can just do you. You. Interesting. It wants to go so oblong. Good. Apply it. In this auto mirror, so I may have to work on half at a time. I'm not click all of these. Snap to this side and just you. Marks. This makes it a little easier on me. Select. I'm looking for boundary. That's good. Do it. 
cool. Some of these pieces worked really well. Some of them are still a pain in my ass. Don't need any back faces like so. This every end. There is a selection hot key for this. Don't remember it. Okay. Anywhere I have kind of like a loop going all the way around like this. These can be, this can be straight on, but these ones all are going to want to seam. All stuff I talk a lot more about in my advanced modeling class. And moving on. Just like with all the other stuff, it's just piece by piece. Mm -mm -mm. I keep doing that. <laughs> I keep doing that and forgetting that that's what I'm trying to do because I keep coming back to it while I'm waiting and I keep looking over the side and then forgetting that that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Okay, I'm gonna apply this. Heaven to Betsy. So as soon as that's applied, I'm gonna split them. Bum bum. Okay. Auto mirror, just give me one half at a time to look at. You, 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 you. Actually, I can go here and then I can do select loops boundary. And there's a little cleanup to do still. Didn't even realize how messy it had gotten.
actually, now think about it, this is a shape that you probably don't need to be split from this. I actually probably want this all to be together. So I'm just going to go take this piece. So I'm going to come back to you. I know I just spent all this time doing all this stuff, but I realized now I actually they get all this cut out of out of my high poly. I just, I just did it to get that little seam. What a wild, wild goose cake. Get all these all these birds. Flattens that out. Here to here, here to here. course means got some fixing up to do. Take all these, unwrap them, this, unwrap you. That's what I'd say when I'm doing some of this stuff is just woof. Anywhere ever done unwrapping before though, I hope would identify it. this is actually going surprisingly quickly. I'm gonna knock out some of these smaller pieces, you know, get my confidence up. Don't need this. Don't need these. This one either. These are all on the bottom. And then Probably should have just brought all my Boolean tools straight into this. That might be a workflow I check out in the future. There's a logic to it. Latest space here, I think.
Okay, that all looks good. So let's auto mirror it. These pieces select boundary loop, mark theme. Give me a theme for all these guys. This can all probably be one piece. All right, well, that should be it for this guy. Cool. That trigger is done. Give it a quick save. Let's go with this dude. Okay, something I don't need is any of these back pieces. So I am going to fill in these cuts right now, kind of go all the way in. So I think what I'm going to do. Usually each of these needs at least one edge connecting them. I'm gonna go ahead and connect those two. You go down there. You I don't need. Or you. Okay. I know. Everyone's looking at me probably like I'm a loon right now with all this work, but this is how you, in order to texture paint something, this is what you got to do. It's just how it is.
not start mark scene. That's what we did. Almost there. And I want these to be pretty straight on. So you do a little snapping. What's going on there? We'll see if I can just unwrap you when I get that. Not working the way I want it to. Doesn't like all this stuff. So I'm just gonna uh, just gonna do it this way.
Okay. Kind of stuff makes your head hurt. Oof. Okay. I'm gonna delete you. I'm gonna pick you, and you're gonna mirror. And then I'm gonna hide you. I don't think I need a lot of these. Let's figure out which ones I do need. Okay, I turned it up a lot, so there's a lot less to work with here. This is good. Less in this case. Definitely better. We'll do this whole thing as one piece. I guess I'll split it running here. now yeah, actually might be pretty good All right. Sometimes I forget there's some really great tools for this kind of stuff. Just gotta remind myself to use them all.
know, wouldn't be this model without a bunch of little bullshit like this. I think in the future, I'm going to take those Boolean straight into Blender. I'll clean them up there. I've got a lot more control over them. That's for sure. Then I do do it this way. Okay. Yep. Got these guys. Use so many software, so many different tools. I'm leaving that guy for last because, well, you know why. I'm lazy. And I don't want to deal with it. You though. Let's get you out of the way. I want to figure out who the hell you think you are. Well, that's it. Why don't you join that party over there? Means just one piece left, and this piece not going to be a fun one, but well, it's going to be done. Definitely going to be a bit of cleanup, but let's apply all auto mirror it so I only have to work on half of it. Let's go. In a lot of ways, it's not as bad as I kind of feared. Certainly not as bad as the slide on this thing, which was probably the messiest thing I had to deal with in this whole project. Not a fan of how some of this got triangulated because it's going to make it a little bit harder for me to do good loops on everything. Try to decide if it's worth it. We'll dissolve and select around on all these. Yeah, I did that on a lot of these, huh? I 
ain't sure about that guy yet. I'm gonna come to him in a second. Man, what's I do to triangulate all these suckers? Just trying to even these out so they do my best best work for me. And I'm kind of quaddish. Well, it's not as bad as I feared. A bit annoying the way it split everything up, but nothing I can't handle.
Okay, we're just hunting down last minute stuff. This whole guy's a mess. I don't know that I feel like fixing it the way I would need to to make it like perfect. Well, I probably won't. Everything else is looking pretty good on here. So, last thing. There's always lots of saving. I'm gonna take all of this. Kind of represents the whole side of this thing. Select those boundary edges and mark those seams. Then I can select these inside guys. Mark these seams. Mark. And one of my strategies is to go around on like flat surfaces that like aren't touching. I don't think I need probably any of these guys. Probably do it just fine. I guess I want this to be a sharp edge, though. Mark me away.
Of course. All these guys. Some time. Same. Let me turn on live unwrap. This. That's the thing I don't need. All right. Woo. I think I might have all this stuff in hand. Save it. A lot of this stuff is mirrored, which is fine because and we'll just mirror the UVs, which uh, for a lot of this project will work pretty well. This is all my UVs, and they're all very much a mess. Go to UV, average island scale, and then let's check these islands. Oh. 
I left live on wrap on. I did not did not want to do that. Try this again. Weird stuff on here, like why aren't these what happened to the unwrap up here? Oh, I thought I had it all in hand. Alright, well, I'm gonna cut my stream for now. I'll probably do another one tomorrow. Where I actually finish this up. And uh I mean I did the whole model. I've got a low poly now. All I have to do is bake it and start painting it, which is pretty cool. Not bad for a couple hours worth of work. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Good luck with your hard surface projects, and I'll talk to everyone soon.